and today we got to play Arc Nova. So this is a game that uh, Randy got to learn at Dice Tower. Um, and so he brought it home and we got to play with it. So we were super excited about that. But before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because board games are awesome. And that is what we do here at Legends of Nirvana. Now we're in a different place. We're at Rob's place, so a little bit different. Yep. We got a special guest, yes, cameo, yeah, Tucker. My, my dog, Tucker. So. Yeah. Look at the He's a good boy. All right. Robert, can you tell us more about Arc Nova? I sure can. So Arc Nova, this came out in 2021, um, but it's just getting a lot of buzz now because it's finally getting to be available to people. Um, so the overall ranking is 66, so it's doing very well. Uh, overall rating is at 8.7. Now the designer is Matthias Wig, assuming I apologize if I mispronounce that. Art by Loic uh, Biliao, Dennis Lohausen, Stefan Beaker, and Christoph Tisch. This is published by Furoland Spiel, but it's brought to the United States by Capstone, which um, is actually where you can pr uh, buy the game, where it's available online now. Um, if you get it through retail, it's pretty much sold out uh, for uh, pre-order, but it's uh, MSRP $74.95, so it's pretty pricey, um, especially since when you compare it to what you really get. But then uh, if you really, really want it like right this second, you can spend $195 on Geek Market and have it shipped to you. Well, is it, it sold out at Capstone? Because it wasn't. No, no, no. That's no, what I'm saying. Same. Well, you got to wait for Capstone to process it. It took and, like two days. And, and they were super fast. So, but if you want so if you want to buy it from, I think it was North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> you can get it for 100 Stick with Capstone or wait for it to come out retail. It's supposed to be out next month. Or make the guy on Geek Market really happy that you spent 195 bucks. All right, so let's talk about um, quality of components. Now, you did say this was $75. Um, I mean, you do get a lot of cardboard bits. You get a lot of cardboard tiles. A lot but of there's nothing, and, and a lot of cards. But I don't think there's anything No, amazing. there's no little finish on the cards. Yeah. Uh, there's and no metal fact, coins. No, and in fact, they're kind of thin. Like, you, you're you going to have to sleep them. Like, no, this yeah, is not an option. And, yeah, you shuffle them a lot because it's mm -hmm. like Terraforming Mars. It's a central point of the game. I mean, there's this game is highly compared to Terraforming Mars. There's a lot of similarities in the gameplay. It also has scoring elements of Raja the Ganges. So if you're familiar with those two games, it's kind of a, if those two games had a baby, this would be it. That had to do with the zoo. Yeah, and if they, you know, like the zoo. Yeah. Um, I mean, but let, let's get back to quality of components, though. I mean, there's nothing outstanding with this. Um, yeah, you get a board, but, I mean, there's nothing that screams to me awesome. So right. uh, for that, I will probably give it a six because there is a lot of bits, but it's really an expensive game. So mm -hmm. um, that's where I'm at with the six. What about you guys? Yeah, I, I mean, I can't see giving it more than six. There's, I mean, there's nothing outstanding. The trays are about the only nice thing that for storage. Mm -hmm. And even those, the lids don't fit nicely on because of the pieces getting, you know, it depends on how you arrange it, I guess. But the way I've arranged it, the pieces don't, they kind of push up the lid. Um, but, you know, there is just a, a ton of bits is really what you get. And it's, it's kind of disappointing for Capstone because we've seen it such good quality lately. Yeah. When you look at Pipeline or yeah. Maracaibo or something like that. So yeah. uh, they've had some amazing games come out. Coffee Traders, I mean, that one was just oh, yeah. phenomenal. Uh, and even Corrosion, to some yep. extent, was better than this. But as far as components, so yeah, this is kind of a letdown from the quality side. All right, what about you, Robert? What are you going to give it? Um, well, I'm actually going to go a little bit lower because, you know, our standard is five at Catan, and I don't think quantity should uh, bump that score up over uh, the quality of pieces. So um, I do like the inserts, so that's why I'm going to give it a five and a half. Yep. That makes sense. All right, so now let's talk about themes. So the theme, you are building a zoo. Now, I will say the cards and the color palette reminds me of zoo animals. I don't know if you guys got that magazine in the 90s. Um, I did, and so that's what it kind of reminds me of. Um, so there's a little nostalgia for the theme for me. But if you actually look at the um, picture art, some of them are real life pictures. Some of them are drawn art. Um, seems kind of disheveled in that sense a little bit because you get a bunch of different, I don't know, stock photos, if you will. It's very reminiscent of Terraforming Mars. It really again. is. The Terraforming Mars had really cheesy kind of stock photos as their pictures, and it, and it has that same feel. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I don't mind it because I didn't mind it in Terraforming Mars either. 
Yeah. So, I mean, overall, though, what are you guys thinking on theme? I like the theme a lot. Yeah. I mean, I, I I think it really, sh I think it kind of shines. I think the mechanics really fit the theme, which is important to me. I think the artwork is really good. Um, and who doesn't love zoo animals? Yeah, exactly. You know, so. Um, I mean, I try to collect all the turtles, but no one gives them to me. But I, I can appreciate, I also like the fact that they put the Latin names of the animals yeah. on the cards. That was really cool. Well, that was really cool. And I, although there's not, I, I don't think there's any really flavor text in the cards, so I didn't see no. any of that in there. Other than the names. Yeah, yeah other than the, the Latin which, names. It's kind which of strange. Is kind of cool. It's kind of strange, though, because like, some of the animals have like the full animal name because there's all kinds of breeds of wolf, for example. But, you know, the wolf card just, just says wolf. wolf. The moose <laughs> card just says moose. I'm sure there's <laughs> varieties of them. But, yeah, it's but some of them do have, like, the very the varied types of right. animals. Right, because there were, like, a bunch of different kinds yeah. of turtles. What's the plural mm -hmm. version of moose? Meese? No, mooses. Mooses? Yeah. Oh. I think it's right. just moose, actually. I think it's mooses. Moose. Moose. Yeah. <laughs> It's not oh Mussolini. my gosh! All right, all right. So let's give it a score. Give it a score. I think for theme, I'm gonna give it an eight. I think it's a solid, uh, good theme, and I, I like how it all fits together. I, it's a fun theme. I don't think it's strong enough to be an eight. I, I mean, it could be anything you're doing this setting in it. I think it's fun that it's animals. Uh, I'll give it a seven. Uh, I'll go right there, dead in the middle. I it, it, there is some nostalgia play in there, and I always liked animals, so. For this one, and I like the fact that you're making a zoo, so um, I do think there is some mechanics that are going along with the theme. Um, so I'm going to give it a seven and a half. All right, so now let's talk about the rule book. So luckily, you were taught at um, the Dice yeah, Tower. I got taught by Tom Vassell, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was pretty cool to get ta taught a game by Tom Vassell. And uh, I this is this game was the hot game at the mm -hmm. Dice Tower Cruise. Yes. It was always busy. I was very lucky to be able to get in. It was a very They almost just left it set up the whole time. There was they did. It was set up the entire time. And it was in the central table as you walked in. And whenever there there was a uh, break, we just happened to be finishing our game. You were getting ready to go to the sauna. And they they were two people sitting down wanting to learn to play, and they were looking for additional players. And Tom Vassell couldn't up. play, and they were like, <laughs> uh, you know, he was like, well, I can teach you, but I can't play. And I'm like, well, I want to play, so I jumped in, and I even got to play blue because it was still open, so that was awesome. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was it was uh, you know obviously I liked it because I rushed out and bought it. So spoiler alert, I like this game. Uh, the, the rule book, however, the, the, it is uh, 20 pages long for the main book. There's also a glossary, and some of the information in the glossary is not in the main book, which I didn't like because there's not just card. I mean, these are card descriptions, but there's also rules that are in the main this glossary. It's eight pages long. And then there is an icon overview. This was very handy, This was, mm -hmm. but it's a full page, and this table is a, this, or this game's a table hog. For sure. Uh, so this being a full page, it's not something you had to kind of pass it around. We had it because there was only sitting, one. So yeah, we had it sitting things. under a tray and had kind to of keep pulling it out every few minutes to check on different icons on the cards. Uh, once you get familiar with the game, you probably won't have to reference it as much, right. so it's not that big of a deal. But you know, being that we were just learning the game, and playing it a few times, we had to keep referencing it. Mm -hmm. So. Overall, what do you what would you give the rules I'll, for? I'll probably give them a seven. It would have been nice to have a cheat sheet with this information, but it's so many icons. I'm not sure you could easily. There was a few things where you had a lot to go online to get FAQ information mm -hmm. during the game. So, you know, given the fact that there, it's not all contained in the rules and you had to go online, I think that to dock it a little bit. So I'll give it a seven. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about actual gameplay. So. The gameplay is is that you have um, five cards with your five different actions on there, um, and then they get set out on the spaces of one, two, three, four, and five. Whenever you start the game, animals will always be in the one position, so just kind of keep aware of that. Everything else is randomly placed, um, and so then you get to choose your action. Now, when you choose your action, you're going to end up taking it from the spot that it is, and that number, so like if I took this one from the four, the four gives it its strength, okay? But then I also will end up pushing everything forward 
and doing that. So just kind of aware that the longer you don't use an action, the stronger it gets. So that's kind of helpful as you go throughout and play it. But sometimes you don't need strong card, uh, the strong, strong strength, depending on what you want to do. Um, all right. So for example, we'll start out with um, sponsors. So sponsors is one of the actions. You play one sponsor card um, with a maximum level of the strength level, um, or you can choose to break that break the strength, um, which is basically the break track um, and gain that much money. Now, what the break track is, is basically almost like a timer for the round. OK, so um, as you spend it, you'll go up on the track. And then when the break is triggered, everyone gets an income phase. So yeah, basically, it's just a round. There's no official for round. round in this game. You just right. keep taking turns until a break happens. And then right. it's kind of the reset mode. Yeah. So that's kind of it, it's a timer for the round. Um, all right, so... But the, but the sponsor cards are basically kind of like your blue, blue cards in Terraforming Mars. They're, well, blue, they're blue in this, in this case, too. too. But they, they have no cost other than the power that you have to be at in order to play it. Yeah. And they give you kind of an ongoing effect and sometimes ongoing actions that you can try. Yeah, or end-of-game victory points or things like that. So just being aware of that. All right, so the next um, action that we could take is the building card. So the building action is preparing your zoo for the animals that you're going to put in. OK, so that based on the strength value that you're pulling the card from is also the strength value of this, basically the size um, that you're allowed to put down. Now, for every space that you end up building. So if I do have a five strength, I don't have to purchase a five. I can purchase a four, three, two or one. But if I do that, um, I do have to pay two coin per space. So I, even if I have a strength of five, but I'm only in building a level three, it still costs me six points um, regardless of the strength that I pull it off of. Um, then you're going to end up placing it. You have to place it next to an existing tile or against the wall um, based on if there is a tile yet in play. Um, and so with that, so keep in mind that these different spaces are, you have to have certain sizes for certain animals. And so that will become relevant um, based when we go to place animals. All right. Um, the next one is, since we're already here, we'll talk about animals. So the animals is, that's these cards here, okay? So if you'll notice, I grab a sponsor, okay. So this one, this one has a strength and also a requirement. So for example, the lesser flamingo, okay? Um, and there's also icons. All right, so you have a level two strength of the building, so you need a two spot, okay? It can be greater, so if you have a five, you can put a two animal in it. I do not recommend that though, um, because that was way more expensive to be able to, to put this animal in. But then also notice that there are requirements. Sometimes those uh, locations, uh, buildings have to be next to water or have to be next to uh, rock or something like that. So just being aware of that when you go to build um, the requirements for the animals that you're hoping to build. All right, and then there's also a money cost to build that animal. So in this case, it's 15. Now, what do you get for it, obviously? So there's some verbiage down here that you will end up triggering. Um, basically, these are the special effects, but you also get these icons and these tickets. Now, tickets um, are one of these scoring mechanisms. So very much in like uh, Ganges is that you can get vict or conservation points in this one, as well as tickets. And when the tickets and the conversation points meet, that's when the end of game is triggered. Conversation but conservation points. Conservation. Yes. yes. While we're having a conversation. Yes. Anyway. Um, all right. So. That's basically the card. You pay the cost. You have the location. You'll end up fl flipping over your build tile to make it to where not the desolate side, and you know that place is occupied moving forward. Is that the animal called the lesser flamingo, you said? Yes. Yeah. It's kind of a diminishing name. That's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of insulting. Yeah. It kind of well, is. What if he's standing next to the other flamingos? Can you tell that he's not that's as good? the greater that? flamingo. <laughs> All right. So the next one that we're going to talk about is association, OK? Uh, perform one association test with a maximum value of X. So the associate association is actually this board here. All right, so there's a couple of actions that we can take here. Um, so this one um, over here at the beginning of the board, it has zero. This is a free action that you can take when you upgrade the cards, and we'll discuss that here in a minute. Um, this one right here, this has a strength of two, and you get two of the um, education token. <laughs> education. It's a particular track here on the board, and so you, as you move up, you get different benefits and have access to more um, cards it's that you the can draw from. Track. All right, this three allows you to gain um, these different um, 
tokens that you can place on your board to upgrade your board um, so that you can have additional icons on your on your board. Um, and then over here, it's another um, board upgrade here that you can add, um, basically increase your hand size and add some research tokens as well as increase your reputation. And the last one is to um, be able to place basically victory points, um, which are located down here. You start out with a certain number um, and when you meet the requirements, you can place on this level five and you can get those victory points as well as re remove a cube off your board, um, which will then allow again to upgrade your board. And you can either gain instant gratification or <laughs> so an instant action, or you get to gain income. Um, and obviously the incomes are a little bit lower, but again, that's great in the fact that you get income every round. So very beneficial. Um, so really this association action is all about upgrading your board and a little bit of victory points as well. All right, so the last one is the cards action and guess, you can guess it, you're gonna gain cards. So based on the level, it's the amount of cards that you draw. Now, some of these have draw and discard. So you can draw whatever it says. So um, in this case, I can draw three um, and then I have to discard one. Now I can discard one from anything in my hand, not just the three that I drew. Um, now there is incidences within like animals and special abilities and things like that, that reads on the card that it is what you draw. So just pay attention to the verbiage and that's kind of relevant um, moving forward. And there's no hand size limit in the game until a break occurs. And at the time the break occurs, by default, you have to go down to three cards. So if you build up a bunch of cards, it can hurt yep. a lot. Uh, now, there is an upgrade that lets you increase that hand limit to five up on a break. But during in between breaks, there's no hand limit. You can yeah. have as many so, cards. So, yeah, I mean, you, you may want to be risky and hold an extra two in your hand and hopefully to get it played before that happens. But that's how that works. All right. Um, so that being said, so we talked about all three tracks. We talked about um, end of game victory points and the game triggers. I think that we haven't talked about the card upgrades. Ah, yes. Yeah, so card upgrade. And that's what we're talking about next. All right. So there are different. So every um, track or everything has basically a icon that will eventually let you upgrade your card. So it looks like a card with a two on it that has a flip over sign. So basically you get to pick one of your actions and you get to upgrade it at that point. Okay. That's fantastic because a lot, all these cards are really good when you upgrade them. And so it's really a battle of which one you're going to do. Now I did notice that depending on the strategy throughout my game was depending on the one that I left out. Like the first game, I think I left out animals because it didn't make sense yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. But then the second game, I kept getting level five animals that required that special icon. And so I ended up flipping animals over. Because there's only four icons on the board that you can choose from to flip a card to make it upgraded. And there's five cards. So there's no way in the base game that you get right. that you can You'll upgrade all, all five. five of them. And one of them is an optional where you choose the card or the a people a person you're always going to choose the card flip i mean there's no reason to ever choose the person it should have just been a card flip because it's a waste i mean i cannot think of a scenario because there's other ways to get the people but there's no other way to get the cards and right. they're so important to this game to get now, the I, I do want to say association action i forgot to mention to be able to do that you do have to work or to trigger it so that's did mm -hmm. something I missed when yeah. I talked about. And you only playthrough. get one worker to start with. Yeah. Yes. And so honestly, sometimes association would sit on my bare back end because I didn't have the worker to be able right. to manage that. So just kind of being aware that there's, there's a lot of things you want to do yeah. and there's a lot of actions that you want to take, but they're, you know, you're battling yeah. that. And no. that's what makes the game a lot of fun. Um, you also have the option of burning a card and just sending it right. back to the beginning of the track to get a X, which adds plus one to your power whenever you play. You can accumulate up to five X's at a time, but those, you know, those are very helpful. In some mm -hmm. cases required, because some of them require like six to play something. And mm -hmm. there's no way to get six unless you play an X with it. Right, so that is, can be some of the thing. Um, I think that's pretty much everything um, besides, you know, just Well, you the also cards. do get in-game scoring oh, at the beginning of the correct. game. You're dealt two of these. You get to choose one. Mm -hmm. At a certain point in the game, you're required to choose one. You don't get to keep both. But it's basically just in-game bonus points for uh, for conservation points at the end, of, you know, whenever, if you meet the criteria. So. All right. So what's your favorite part of the game? Hmm. I think it's the card play. Just like with Terraforming Mars. It's being able to, you know, get that right card that combos well with another card that you got and 
being able to do cool stuff. I, well, I like that, and I like managing my board. I, I always like games where I have engines that can manage my how yeah. I open stuff up on my board. And this one has both of those elements. So it has the Terraforming Mars card play, which is kind of interesting, because basically Terraforming Mars, you have a central board that everybody shares, and right. I never build anything on it. But in this game, you have your own personal board, and I... Nobody's going to pay attention to us because they're all going to be watching yeah. Tucker during the <laughs> game. Uh, but yeah, there, there's the central, you have your own private board and I spend a lot more time worrying about my private board in this because it's got the Tetris element to it too. Yeah, that's I, a lot of fun. I agree. I, I really like that, but I really like card play the most for me. Yeah. So, what about you? Um, I think my favorite piece is, I like small animals. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I like turtles. that. Um, oh, something I did forget to mention. We didn't kind of go over the income phase. So what happens during a break, obviously it triggers an income, but there's a couple of things that happen is you reduce your hand size. Um, you remove venom or negative um, tokens that occur depending on the animals that, that were placed in the game. Um, and then you take all your workers back from the association track. Um, and then you burn the first two cards on the, mm -hmm. the middle section here. And then something very important. Oh, then you take all your income. But part of that income is there are numbers around this edge of this board. <laughs> very important. For tickets. <laughs> for, okay. That gives you money. So based on where your guy is on the ticket level, you get that income. Okay. This is very important. Now, why is it very important, guys? <laughs> Because it makes it a whole lot harder yeah. buying, buying yeah. stuff if you don't do it. If you're playing without that rule, which we did the first time. Uh, oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. You end up with a very scarce money resource. <laughs> uh, it was not nearly as scarce when you play it with right. that rule, uh, which uh, is the way you're supposed to play it. You are supposed to play it with that income. Um, however, we and I, kind and of... And I don't know the other thing we didn't mention. Did we mention that there's different boards? No, we didn't. So that you, there's there's... Two standard boards that you can play with, the A side and the zero side. Why they chose A and zero instead of A and B, I don't know. But the A side basically gives you, a, it's kind of the starting introductory board, and it gives you a lot more starting stuff. It's kind of like if you played with everybody having the same prelude, right. if you will, if, on Terraforming Mars. Now, the zero side is if you want to give yourself a, a challenge, you play with no starting anything, basically. It's just blank. On the other side of all the boards, though, is a completely custom, special, everybody has their own player ability. And that's the way you're supposed to play once yeah. you know the game. So, Which I liked. Yeah. yeah, I liked it a lot. I did like that um, thing. I think overall, I think there's a lot going on for this game. I will say our second or third, it would be our third playthrough when we played it with the right <laughs> income level. Uh, it was my third play, your second, your my fourth. fourth. Um, so I feel like that, that was a strong mention. Uh, but other than that, I, I really did enjoy this game. I thought it was fantastic. I think a lot, it has a lot to say for it. Um, I think overall I would probably score this mm, eight, eight and a half, nine. I, I'm kind of to tossed between the two. I really, really like this game. What about you guys? What did you think? Yeah, I, I like the one thing I don't like about it is the fact that there's no draft. The the, the cards yeah. you're you're dealt a hand of cards. You get to choose half of them to keep and half to discard at the beginning of the game. Now you do have it, you know, where you can pick cards from the middle track here, based on based your... upon how your your reputation has built up during the course of the game. As far the further down the track that you can grab, there's also an option though where in, when you're doing the card action, instead of choosing the number of cards you're supposed to get. You can take one card for, in, when you reach a certain level. I think you have to be at level five. Unless you have it flipped. Uh, you know, once you upgrade it, you can go down to level three. But it lets you basically snag any card from the board you want, yeah. no matter where your reputation right. is. But you know, in essence, you know, you're know, you basically taking the draw of the cards. So there is some luck element of which cards you get. Whereas you know, you know Terraform Mars, you're bidding. And, play, and well, if you play with the standard rules, you're doing a draft. Right. Well, I, I will say this, though. When the the last playthrough, because we realized that you can draw, like, so when you do the card action, right, it says draw three, mm -hmm. discard discard one, you could actually draw three from that, from your level and below. Right. And I think that helped a lot to mitigate some of that drafting concern. But then again, there was nothing on the board I wanted because y'all took yeah. it too fast. So, um, you know, so with that, I think that helped yeah. a little bit with that, but... Again, I can see where you're some that was there was some it seemed very um luck based on your it could cards be a little, a little swing bit. in yeah. that regard. So, so yes. but given it, it you know 
Obviously, I love this game because yeah, as soon as I played it, I wanted to buy it, even though I had it on pre-order since December of last year. I, and it, they kept delaying this arriving retail, and Capstone kept sending it direct instead of sending it through retail. So I ended up, even though I've got a pre-order for it already at a discounted rate, I went ahead and bought it full price from Capstone because I like this game so much and I wanted to get the review done. Uh, but I really, uh, you know, would I compare this to Terraforming Mars? You know, that's the obvious comparison and that's what everybody wants to know is this better than Terraforming Mars? A lot of people think it is. I don't. I, it's, I, I don't either. I, it's, I don't either. I think it's better than Terraforming Mars. Ares Expedition. I don't like the, the card game nearly as well as Terraforming Mars. Uh, you know, if I'm ranking the three, it's Terraforming Mars first, then this, then Ares Expedition. I can agree with that one. This one, I think I'm probably somewhere between 8.5 and 9 on. Uh, it's a great game. I, I like everything about the mechanics of it. I just don't like it as well as Terraforming Mars. I don't think the card... I don't think the cards were designed as well. Right. Yeah. I, that's why I think the interactions of the cards in Terraform Mars are so well done. I mean, everything about that game, that's just the card you could, there's so many ways to play it. This one, I don't think it has that, the variability. Yeah. It, I mean, my biggest thing is the swingy factor of it. And, but it's still a great game. I yeah. still want to play it. You know, it, it's still something, hey, let's, let's pull that one out yeah. and let's play that well, one. Well, we sure. set it up here for the review and I'm like, I, I really want to be playing this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I know we don't have time because we got to shoot a bunch of videos today, but I really want to play this again now that I got it out. Uh, but it's, it's just, a, it's a fun game. I mean, it's, yep. it, it is a no, fun no, game. It's, it's long. I'll tell you that it is long. Uh, and, and I think with more players, there, there's a, more downtime in this one, you know, whereas Terraforming Mars, I don't feel that downtime because I'm always plotting my turns. Right. This one, I don't feel like I can plot my turns like I can in Terraforming Mars. So the downtime of having more players is more impactful in this game to me. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, thank you so Oh, wait, you didn't give it a score. I was going to see if you yes. were going to let me talk yeah. or not. I mean, Dave was talking a lot. I'm sorry. No. Um, I think I'm on, I'm kind of on the same board, uh, uh, ground with uh, Randy. I think I would give it, I think I originally was going to think about eight and a half, but I think I'm an eight just because although I really like the game a lot, it's just the components combined with the price. If it, if it was a little bit cheaper or the components was a little bit nicer. I think I'd give it a higher score. And, and when I compare it to Terraforming Mars, though, I'm comparing it with the knowledge I've got Prelude and yeah, I've got Venus yeah. and I've got, you know, and right. that's the thing is this is just the base game. Yeah. And we also and, have and the it, upgraded pieces in Terraforming Mars. And we all agree, though, you can definitely see so much room for expansions in this oh, game. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I so, mean, so, yeah. and it might be, it might take that same path that uh, Terraforming Mars did where it got better. I think this can only get better. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. that's the thing is I can't see, I mean, we might get a bad one. You know, we didn't like Turmoil. Right. So I think it is possible to release an expansion that detracts. You know, it could happen, but I think this one, there's, it has room for growth. Sure. And it's still amazing already. Yeah. So. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. All right. Um. So a, Eight and a half to a nine, eight and a half to a nine, eight to eight and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so um, overall, it's got a pretty good score. I think, you should, I think you should go check it out to see if this is something that fits you. All right, guys, we'll catch you guys later. Hopefully you'll come hang out with us again. Bye. 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 Tucker said bye.